when we were talking about the actual dyeing machine that is used, I said that it is possible to use polyester for polyester dyeing, jigger and winchbeck. However, there are other machines and other techniques also, where the dye used is one with high diffusion coefficients, dyes with low diffusion coefficients are less suitable. So, whether we are using jigger or whether we are using winchbeck, we need to understand one very important fact that the dye or the dispersed dye that is using being used must have high diffusion coefficient and therefore should avoid the dyes which have low diffusion coefficient because they will not be found suitable for jigger and winch machine because there is no possibility of creating any high temperature high pressure. However, uniform heating of the fabric presents difficulties in jigger due to loss of heat in the open system. Even when it is heated to 100 degrees, the temperature available to the fabric is only between 80 to 90 degrees. And as I told you that polyester requires high heating. So therefore, jigger is not one of the best machines, but of course, if one has only jigger in the dye house. It is possible to do polyester dyeing in that jigger itself. The conditions with winch beck is dyeing is much favorable as compared to the jigger. Even dye auxiliaries play a very vital role. The role of dye auxiliaries such as carriers and leveling agents in the dyeing of polyester fibers with dispersed dye in high temperature dyeing machines is well known because you see unless and until these facilitating chemicals are added for swelling of the fiber, for the dispersion of the dye molecule, it is not going to get facilitated even at high temperature and pressure. Calculated and optimal dose and application of the auxiliaries were documented by calculating the acceleration factor that is equal to A and A is equal to dye exhausted with the auxiliary upon dye exhausted without the auxiliary. Then only we can know the role of the auxiliary. Suppose if I say that A is a good swelling agent, A is a good, uh, B is a better uh, career, will you believe that? There has to be some scientific data to assure that A or B are better and in order to find out that the best practice is to find the acceleration factor. Is it accelerating? If it is accelerating, the value will be positive because with the use of the auxiliary will always be a higher finite number than the uh, uh, the second value which is without the auxiliary and if there is the rate of diffusion is enhanced that means there is an acceleration. So that is how the role of auxiliary in dyeing is uh, uh, ascertained. Leveling agents act in a similar manner as the carriers. With respect to the interaction with the dye, equilibrium effect and migration effect. So, they play a role of creating the evenness, although the dye has diffused, but it needs to be dispersed completely on the even surface and this is done with the help of these carriers and because they affect the equilibrium effect and the migration. The dye must migrate properly onto the entire surface. They do not interact with the fiber, thus have no role in accelerating the dyeing process. They are just facilitator. They are facilitating the process, but they are not actually playing a direct role in that. They also have lower effect on migration as compared to the carriers. So, both leveling agents and carriers go hand in hand and when they are actually going hand in hand, they play a big role in finding out how they are going to affect each other. And when they both are added, 
they have an overall effect on the dyeing process. High temperature dyeing, polyester fiber as what I mentioned a little while ago, polyester fibers and their blends may be dyed under high temperature condition above 125 degrees or even sometimes 130 degrees. Above 100 degrees the fiber swells to a great extent and hence there is rapid penetration of the dye molecules in the fiber structure. So, because it has to be done at a higher temperature, this requires a special attention. We were not heating at 125 degrees or 130 degrees when we were talking about natural dyeing and natural fiber dyeing. But this fiber being hydrophobic needs some special attention and some special treatment. There is decreased resistance to the diffusion of the dye molecules at 130 degrees than at 100 degrees. So, because it is facilitated more and more at higher temperature that is why higher temperature is preferred. Now, you will also appreciate one thing that to attain high temperature more fuel, more energy would be required. So, unless and until that it is a mandatory process people will not do it and because they found that by heating it at a higher temperature the effect is better that is why it was recommended. Even the dispersed dye is much more soluble in water at higher temperature. So, it also helps in the solubility of the dye. So, dye solubility and the you know dye dispersion everything takes place well at 130 degrees as compared to 100 degrees. Therefore, a company came up with a new process called thermosol dyeing. Now, DuPont introduced this dyeing method called thermosol dyeing, which was meant for nylon, polyester and orlon without the use of carrier. That means, they found that there is, there can be another process for the industry and this innovation was done by a very renowned company called DuPont. Here the advantage taken is that synthetic fibers are considered to be thermoplastic and when these fibers are heated to a high temperature, they soften, their internal structure is opened up and facilitating the entry of the dispersed dye in the fiber. This plasticizing effect of heat on these fibers is responsible for rapid rate of diffusion of the dye requiring only a few seconds to a few minutes. This heating need not be done at a very high temperature for a very long time, but only for a short while, a few seconds to a few minutes without using any carrier. And this really brought down the cost, because as you would recall, the cost of the carrier was fairly high. And therefore, if it can be avoided, the process can be done at a low cost. Now, this is how the pre-treated material was, you know, passed through bleaching, desizing, scouring and so on and then through padding and then dye fixation in a dry heat chamber and then finally, the dye fix was uh, put into the stenter and then washed off. So, putting it in, in the stenter actually helped it to get into the thermoplastic material. So, that was the whole idea. Factors that matter the polyester dyeing is dye selection, career selection if we are not following the thermosol process, dyeing temperature and time, use of global salt for using as a leveling agent pre-scouring with anionic detergent or liquor ammonia, then finally dyeing after scouring with non-ionic detergent and acetic acid to fix the dye. So, this is the order of you know factors that needs to be kept in mind when one is learning or doing polyester dyeing. So, with this we have come to an end of this chapter which is related to polyester dyeing, but we just saw a few things about the bleaching, the scouring, the 
uh, other pretreatments that the fabric needs to go through. So, we will try to now look at the pretreatments of the synthetic fibers which need to be carried out before they are taken for dyeing. Remember when we were doing natural fibers like cotton, silk and wool, the pretreatment was very simple. It only had to go through uh, you know scouring and sometimes bleaching and then uh, the fabric was ready. The gray fabric was just ready for uh, use for dyeing. But that is not the same case when we take synthetic fibers, particularly nylon, polyester, polyacrylic uh, material, polyamide and so on and so forth. So, we will now take this chapter on the treatments that are required for these kind of synthetic fibers. So, that is the difference between what we learnt earlier and now what are we going to learn something new and this newness is because these synthetic fibers need different kind of pretreatment. Why pretreatment is needed? While as a whole this process consists of desizing, process scouring and bleaching, pretreatment process basically aim to removal of all impurities found on fiber especially cellulose fibers so that the material have a degree of whiteness and they are good absorbent of the dye stuff. This is what we had learned in the previous section when we were looking at the scouring and the bleaching and the desizing of cotton. But that was only when the fabric was bought after it was woven that all kind of impurities that are adhering on the surface which can hamper the dye uptake, those should be removed. What causes impurities? The raw material is generally containing unwanted matters of fibers and the impurities of the fibers. These impurities are natural impurities that is it is the dirt that emerge together in the cotton and other fiber when they are being woven, impurities from outside that is dirt coming from outsider yarn of the or fabric. For example, oil, dust, parts of leaves, branch, stain of oil from the machine etcetera, etcetera. Because you see when the fiber is being woven, there are many places where it is touching the ground, it is not every place is clean. So, it is bound to take up the dust and dirt from the vicinity. The addition of impurities like additional impurities, material impurities of the fluency of the process like oil, starch, these are added to the yarn in order to weave them into the fabric. So, these also needs to be removed. A gray material, this is a usual flow chart. A gray material goes through uh, singeing, desizing, scouring, mercerizing, uh, and then it goes through bleaching, dyeing, printing, or it can go to dyeing, or it can go to printing, and finally to finishing and to the finished good. So, this is the flow chart. So, there are several, several steps which need to be understood clearly as to what is their role. Now, if one tries to just look at cotton, we did not do this so much in detail when we were doing cotton preparation, we just said okay, cotton was simply scoured or cotton was bleached or bleached cotton was taken and it was simply scoured. But here, apart from scouring, there is this singeing, desizing, washing and then scouring is carried out. After that again uh, it can go through bleaching, mercerizing uh, and there are various various options that can be done with cotton. So, but these are the main initial steps are singeing, desizing, mercerizing and scouring. This cannot be avoided. So, let us try to take a look at the gray fabric. Inspection of the gray fabric, preparation of process be done by gray material before wet processing or chemical process is carried out. First one has to make an inspection, how dirty it is. 
Preparation of this process consists of opening and pile up sewing and inspection of the cloth. Pile up is working to open cloth of grey which still is in the form of roll tide. Opening or of unrolling recognized with process exposed of cloth have purpose to open cloth of rolling form before wide form so that next process fluently stacks happens fluently. Main thing that you have to understand is that inspection of the cloth for checking the situation of the grey fabric. What is it? Is it very dirty? Is it less dirty? Is it less oily? Is it, does it have too much of oil stain? And then one has to decide what is to be done next. A typical pretreatment cotton involves singeing, desizing by conventional or enzymatic process, scouring by conventional or enzymatic process, bleaching, neutralization, peroxide removal, biopolishing, mercerizing, optical brightening. So, these are the various steps that the cotton has to go through. Similarly, we have synthetic fibers, we have to see what all needs to be done. Is it dirty while being woven and if it is become dirty, it needs to be scoured and bleached and so on. This is a typical machine which shows that how the grey fiber is uh, you know evaluated and it is processed. Objectives of the pretreatments, good sizing effect, removal of seed husk, removal of foreign substances from the fiber, low possible fiber damage, high degree of whiteness, good physical te or technological rating of the fiber, high color yield, levelness of the effect, high and even hydrophilicity or revetability. Now, you see that all this is required for two simple reasons. First is that the fabric should not have any color or stain or oil marks. Second thing is it should be so pure white that the color that is entering or the dyeing that will be taking place subsequently must have an evenness. That is the two motto and for that it is important to remove the husk, all foreign particles, all dust particles and as far as possible the processes should be so soft and mild that they should not eventually cause any damage to the fiber or fabric and it should eventually create high degree of whiteness and therefore, the color will definitely be taken up more effectively. Singeing, it is a process of burning out projecting hair fibers from the surface of the grey fabric by assigns that fabric through a glass flame. Both sides of the fabric are burnt out by the flame. It helps in subsequent chemical process of the fabric after dyeing or printing of singed fabric, brightness and luster of the color and fabric becomes better. Singeing is a process applied to both yarns and fabric to produce an even surface by burning of projecting fibers, yarn, ends and fuzz. This is accomplished by passing the fiber or yarn over a gas flame or heated copper plates at a speed sufficient to burn away the protruding material without scorching or burning the yarn and fabric. So, this is a very fast process on to the very heated copper plates or uh, over the uh, gas uh, flame, the fabric is quickly passed. Now, every striation or you know these uh, you know um, fuzz or yarn ends or fabric ends are burnt off. So, that these are the places where the dust actually accumulates. So, if these are burnt off, the uh, singeing uh, would be carried out and these projecting hair fibers re really create a very bad look on the fiber. So, if they are removed by burning it off and at the same time it does not burn the fabric. So, it is only burning the uh, surface uh, protruding fibers. Singeing is a finishing method 
for smoothing surfaces of the fabrics by burning. A gas singeing machine is normally employed. The gas singeing machine is typically equipped with four burners and is capable of singeing one or both surfaces of the fabric. A water cooled roller is provided at a location opposite to the burners thereby enabling singeing to be performed without undermining the strength of even thin fabrics. It is important to set a drain temperature of the water cooled roller in the range of 50 to 55 degrees. Cautions are required because a dew point is generated when the water cooled roller is ro cooled down too much and results in increased amount of remaining fuzz or adhered carbon. The fabric fed speed is preferably set at around 100 to 150 meters per minute. So you see that is the kind of speed of the singeing machine and this is the reason why it has to be very fast. It is a four burner system and there is a water cooler. So that water cooler helps to remove the burnt part as well as it washes off the uh, the, all the dirt and the other particles that are associated with the process of burning. Desizing, it is a process of removing starch materials present in the grey fabric. Generally enzyme is used to degrade and remove the starch present in the grey fabric. So the desizing is done enzymatically nowadays. If those size materials are not removed from the grey fabric, then the subsequent chemical treatments on the fabric will be irregular, which will cause defective dyeing and printing. So because these chemicals which are treated at the time of processing the yarn, you know from the cotton or from the initial striations of the uh, fabric when the yarn is uh, being woven that time some starchy material are added in order to add strength to the yarn. They need to be removed and that removal of the starchy material by enzymatic reaction is done in the desizing uh, process. The process by which we remove sizes are known as desizing. Sizing is the need for the weaving but is an obstacle for the dyeing. It can be done by many ways such as acid steep, rot steep, enzymatically, etc. In all these enzymatic desizing is dominating because of its eco-friendliness and also because of its characteristic that is it acts as a specific sites only at definite pH, temperature and concentration. Mainly starch is used as an ingredient in the sizing. So we know that it is an important part because in order to weave the yarn, this sizing material of starch has to be coated on the yarn. Now it is like decoating the starchy material which is done by desizing. And to do that, there are many methods to do that, but the enzymatic desizing is found to be the best method. Chemical starch is polyalpha-glucopyranose in which straight chain amylase and branch chain amylopectin polymers are present. Both constituents of starch are insoluble in water, but they can be solubilized by hydrolysis of these long chain compounds to shorter ones. Thus, under suitable conditions, starch can be progressively hydrolyzed to the following stages. In desizing, the hydrolysis reaction is carried out up to the stage of soluble dextrin only to and not further to alpha glucose. So from the insoluble state of the starch, it has to be simply uh, converted into the solubilized form. That is all. It need not go break down to its smallest component. So these amylopectins and the amylase must be broken down only till that. And a typical sizing method by conventional method is that in this method we first take the weight of the sized fabric, let that be W1, then desize the fabric, dry and take the weight, 
let it be W2. After that, the fabric is treated with 3 GPL 35 percent HCL at 70 degrees, not enzymatically, it is done by acid. For 30 minutes, dry and take the weight of the fabric, let it be W3. Now, total size would be W1 minus W3 and residual size will be W2 minus W3. And desizing efficiency would be calculated on the total size minus the residual size upon total size into 100. So, that is how the calculations are done, whether the desizing has been done efficiently or not and a typical calculation method has also been discussed with here. Like starch, polyvinyl alcohol is also one of the common compounds. Since it is a powerful film coating sizing agent and because of the ease with which it can be removed, it is soluble in water, it is an ideal sizing agent. So, apart from starch, there is another compound called polyvinyl alcohol which is also used as sizing agent and therefore, it has to be removed too and it, the removal of polyvinyl alcohol is much easier because it is water soluble. The molecular weight and the degree of hydrolysis are the two primary factors which influence its solubility in water. The solubility decreasing with increasing molecular weight. The desizing of polyvinyl treated fabric involves only three steps, swelling, dissolving and dispersing. The, in contrast to starch, enzyme normally used for desizing starch do not hydrolyze it. The principal steps in desizing procedures are wetting out with suitable wetting agent, steeping for accepting the swelling and softening of the polyvinyl alcohol film, rinsing thoroughly in overflowing water, desizing efficiency is found in two ways both conventional and modern. So, whether it is you know desizing of starch or desizing of polyvinyl alcohol, the common method is to remove them by washing it out in or by hydrolyzing it. Then comes the next steps, the scouring step. It is the process of removing natural impurities present on the cotton fiber as well as on the synthetic fibers. The natural impurities are pectin, pectose, ash, ash, wax, mineral components, oil stains. If those impurities present in the cotton fiber or other fibers are not removed, then it will be difficult to dye or print the fabric uniformly. Normally caustic soda ash is used as a main reagent for scouring of cotton fabric, but we have also seen that scouring can be done by mild detergents as in the case of silk and wool. So, be it any fiber, be it any fabric, this process is common to all. Scouring of special cotton and its influence on the physical properties. Cotton being a natural fiber contains more natural impurities in its primary and secondary walls. Analysis of cotton wax is the past has revealed a general composition as 25 percent fatty acid, 52 percent alcohols, 10 percent sterols, 7 percent hydrocarbons and 6 percent inert matters. The main constituents of wax include 1 triacetantanol, montanol, beta cysterol and a mixture of high molecular weight esters. About 85 percent of the carboxyl groups in the pectic substances of cotton are methylated are, and are in the form of insoluble calcium, magnesium, iron salts of polygalacturonic acid which also constitutes to the non-absorbent characteristic of raw cotton. So, in order to make even cotton which we thought that was very hydrophilic, there were many hindrances which were actually needed to be removed because these compounds also make cotton as hydrophobic. Very much limited literature are available with regard to special types of cotton fiber like organic cotton, colored cotton. But cotton fibers and their effect with alkali scouring and enzyme scouring 
are the ones which actually change the physical properties because we need to change these physical properties in order to increase the dyeability of the cotton and therefore scouring is a very important step. Effect of scouring on weight loss, sometimes you know higher molecular values were observed in the case of alkali scoured samples compared to solvent extracted and enzyme scoured samples. Invariably enzyme scouring resulted in low weight loss whereas the values of the samples followed by the solvent extraction. In spite of high weight losses observed in the solvent extraction, the lower values of enzyme treatment perhaps indicate the influence of the surface bound impurities in accessing the substrate for the enzyme reaction. So, if we make a comparison of doing a scouring with solvent extraction versus enzyme, where what would have a bigger weight loss? What it, the, it is found that enzymes are found to be the best. The fineness of the fibers expressed in terms of microgram per inch or text to the, a larger extent depends on the maturity of the fibers and also by the amount of the moisture present in the material to some extent. Removal of the hydrophobic impurities in the surface of the fibers is likely to increase the moisture regain of the fiber which otherwise could reduce the bound water to be hydrophobic surface of the impurities. So, it is absolutely necessary and important to do the scouring. Time and again I am telling you that scouring even cotton if not scoured will be as bad as polyester what we saw just now. So, I am taking this comparative data, I am making this comparison more clear to you only to make you understand that scouring for cotton is very important. If not done on cotton, it will be as bad as uh, for dye uptake as what we saw in the last lecture that polyesters were very tough to dye. Effect of scouring on the fineness of the fabric. In case of alkali scoured samples, a significant increase in the fineness values were observed. Compared raw cotton fiber and enzyme scoured, uh, scoured fibers, this possibly could be due to the residual pectins present in the alkali scoured material and the lower values observed in the case of enzyme treated samples could be possibly due to partial removal of the hydrophobic impurities from the surface of the fiber as expressed by the lower weight loss uh, values. However, in the case of fineness, large differences in the values were not observed in the case of weight as in the case of weight loss. Tensile strength of the fiber mainly depend on the capacity of the polymeric molecules to withstand the load and their ability to distribute the load between the ordered and the disordered regions. That is wherever there is a crystalline and the wherever there is an amorphous structure within the cotton, it kind of um, distributes the tensile strength. Here the disordered region that is the matrix helps to transfer the force to the adjacent ordered reg regions for better strength realization. Scouring, therefore, removal of hydrophobic impurities in the sample resulted in higher moisture content values in the treated fibers. However, difference in the extraction of the hydrophobic impurities in the treatments could result in variation in the moisture content of the samples tested after the treatment. Though solvent extraction results in higher weight loss compared to enzyme treatment, the moisture content values were found to be low in the solvent extracted samples. Therefore, again and again we are coming to one basic idea that enzyme scouring is the best method for the fibers. Enzyme it also because it is eco-friendly, it is biodegradable. Every process needs to be evaluated from the point of eco-friendliness also. Enzymatic scouring is a widely accepted method in industrial practice. Since the biocatalysts do not harm the cellulosic material, 
present in the cotton. However, the entire substrate present in the fibers are not hydrolyzed by the enzymes during the enzymatic scouring operation due to poor accessibility of the pectic uh, substances present in the fibers. This also results in difference in variation and various properties like fineness, strength, elongation and moisture control of the fibers. So, you see that even that process is not foolproof, but it is to a large extent acceptable because it removes a lot of impurities. Then comes the bleaching. It is the process of removing natural coloring matter present in the cotton fiber. For this purpose, hydrogen peroxide bleaching powder or other bleaching agents are used. Hydrogen peroxide is the best and most commonly used bleaching agent because other bleaching powder and other chlorinated bleaches are banned now. If this bleaching treatment is not carried out before dyeing or printing, then the color yield and shade matching may be a great problem because bleaching and making the fabric as white as possible is a must when one is doing dyeing. And that is why I took this chapter of pretreatment after I had taught you about the dyeing process because then you will understand why these uh, bleaches are important, why the fabric should be absolutely color free, uh, color free so that it can take up color during the process of dyeing. Bleaching cotton. While bleaching cotton, a lot of chemical energy and water are part of the process and reducing the environmental impact of cotton production addresses this, these issues. The company called Huntsman has developed a wetter stabilizer that maximizes the wetting and detergency of the bleaching process in one bath caustic neutralizer and peroxide remover in order to shorten the bleaching cycle reduce energy and water required and deliver more consistent bleaching results. They have developed surfactants that are environmentally friendly in that they do not contain alkyl phenol ethoxylates and the system that is both Ecotex and GOTS approved. So, these are certain processes which need to be, re uh, to be understood and new and new advancements are coming up. And finally, we come to the mercerizing. This is a process chemical treatment, pretreatment of cotton improves the property and performance of the cotton fabric. The fabric is treated under tension with 20 percent caustic soda solution and this process is called mercerizing. Mercerization increases the fabric strength, absorbency power, fabric cluster, fabric softness and handling property. And also dye consumption is good when this is mercerized cotton. Chemical consumption in dyeing is also reduced if mercerizing is done to the fabric. So, with this we have come to an end of the chapter called pretreatment.